And we are here with UCLA women's basketball head coach Corey Close. Uh, she is uh, joining us uh, for a special interview with Bruin Report Online. Uh, coach, uh, thank you for joining us uh, once again. Um, you know, it's going to be a big year. Um, you're already starting off in a big way. But uh, I just want to quickly, you know, talk about what has gone on with the Bruins, uh, especially in the last uh, a few seasons. Uh, this season, you were picked to uh, you were picked in the top five for the second year in a row uh, of, of the AP Top 25. Uh, you've had uh, the program itself has had, I believe, 10 25 plus winning seasons. Um, Seven of those have come in the last 12 years under your guidance. You know, what can you say about what you've been able to build here at UCLA? Well, it starts with representing the great four letters across your chest. You know, you represent excellence, right? And that's academically and being the number one uh, public institution in the country. That has to do with athletically. It also has to do with how we uh, serve our community and we do something bigger than ourselves. So I just think it's a matter of a commitment to excellence in everything we do. Uh, you know, whatever we want to choose to do, um, the, just anything lower than that is poor stewardship of being able to represent this great place. So... Um, you know, I, I just that's how I always think about it is that um, I don't really think about how many wins in a season or I don't really think about I just think about how close to excellence are we? How how consistently are we showing um, the kind of representation worthy of wearing the UCLA brand? And so um, that's, I'm, that's what I'm trying to do is be a good ambassador and to give them habits of excellence that they'll have for the rest of their lives. Well, let's talk about what, uh, what, what you've done in the offseason, because you had a busy offseason. You have, uh, unfortunately, a lot of turnover, some transfers, some uh, graduates, some uh, retirees, but uh, you were able to bring in uh, three uh, quality transfers, four uh, first-year players. <clears throat> it's, <clears throat> the, pardon me. The roster seems like it is, once again, very deep. Like Last year, I said that that was probably your best roster uh, to date. This, I think, you know, is going to be a little bit better than that. Uh, yeah. Let's just start with the returners. You know, Lauren Betts and uh, Kiki Rice have been uh, named to the Big Ten uh, coaches and media poll, uh, all, all Big Ten team. What do they bring? What? Uh, yeah. How have they improved from last season? And and what do you see of them uh, from this from this uh, going into well, this year? Yeah, you know what I love um, so much is that. Um, is I, I'm really committed to what we're talking about from a, um, you know, an intentional growth standpoint. Bottom line is that um, we are in a position with uh, with our two best players. They need to be our, grace, our greatest leaders and our greatest intentional growers, so to speak. And what I love about Kiki Rice is her work ethic is unmatched. She sets the tone for everybody else. You want to be elite? This is the roadmap that you do. You follow Kiki Rice. And what I love about when you ask her, what did you focus on the offseason? Uh, I think I've shared this with you before, Mike, but, she, you know, most players go, well, I, you know, I just worked a little bit of everything, just tried to get shots up. No, no, not Kiki Rice. She says, pick and roll reads, three-point consistency, and my off-ball defense. And so when you have your, you know, one of your most uh, heralded players coming back with that kind of focus and energy, it sets the tone for everybody else. Um, and so Kiki's going to be huge in that piece, and, you know, she, it starts with her. As the point guard, it just starts with her, and it's going to be really important. What we learned about Lauren is obviously um, her field goal percentage efficiency, one of the best in the country. Um, you know, she's really added to her game. She's hitting the 15, 17-footer now. Um, she's doing a lot of great things offensively, and, and that's what people talk about first. But when she was out those, I think, seven games last year, the bigger impact was on the defensive end. It just changes how we scheme when you have a rim protector like that. And she does it without fouling, too. She, she defends aggressively, um, but she does it in a way that um, keeps her on the floor and keeps our rotations. And so um, I just think those two are so impactful in the way other teams have to scout us. And so I think it starts with them, and we're excited that they set the tone with their work ethic as well. Now, I do also want to talk about uh, some other uh, key returners who have uh, really added to this. Um, you have, uh, let's start with London Jones. Uh, set a record for three-pointers uh, last season. Um, you know, she's the smallest player on the team, but she does not play that way. What, 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 how has she developed? Well, I think that that's, that's my big challenge to her is that, you know, especially at her size, she's got to learn to impact the game in more ways than just shooting threes. And so... Um, she does play bigger than she actually is. But one of the things we've really challenged her with is how can you become a better off-ball defender? 
I thought she did a great job putting pressure on the ball last year. Um, but, you know, but we like to switch a lot of screens. And how are you going to fight to make sure that the other team can't take advantage of mismatches? Um, how can you raise your assist totals? Um, is she, as people fly out at her to take away her three, how can she get into the lane and make better decisions out of that? And so those have been my challenge to her in the offseason is um, finding more ways to impact winning. Uh, possessions and so that's that's her focus is finding more ways to uh, impact the game besides shooting threes uh angela dubich she walked last year for senior uh senior day but she um she came back she decided to come back has another year of eligibility what, how has she grown and what is she going to add to this roster yeah she actually even has two more years of eligibility miraculously um but uh you know, I mean, heck, how many times do I get to say that I'm coaching a two-time Olympian in college? You know, she, so I think she comes back with yeah, tremendous experience, right? She just played in her second Olympics for Serbia. Um, she actually will be staying in Europe for a little bit. Um, she will miss the Colgate game um, because she's going to stay for Eurobasket qualifiers. Um, and so she's going to um, be staying and playing a couple games of Serbia after we play in Paris. Um, but I think she brings such a... Uh, a poise this year um, that she didn't have before. Just in practice today, um, I think she led our team in assists. And we've really challenged her to use her shooting ability to be a great post feeder, to be a great passer, because she's going to have good spacing. And so um, and then she's playing off two feet more. She was a little bit out of control when she drove to the basket last year. And now um, she's really playing off two feet and making better decisions and being more on balance. Uh, and, you know, our big thing for her is on defense. She's a really good defender. The thing that holds her back is she fouls too much. And that's going to be the big thing for her is can she play with uh, versatility and aggression, but with control and discipline. And so, uh, you know, Angela just brings a poise and an experience this year that I have not seen up to this point, which is exciting. And the last returner, uh, Gabriella Hawkes, who I refer to as like the Swiss Army knife, like she can do it all. And um, yeah. last year she she showed like a lot of, you know, a more aggressive and her defense uh, seemed to take a step up. What yeah. did she bring this year? Well, especially I loved her passion. One of the things I love about her is she's so passionate about whatever she does. Um, you know, the our, our great bro, uh, bro uh, subscribers are going to remember her face when she crossed the um, the bases in the NCAA tournament for softball <laughs> yeah. and that face of just joy and she's just passionate about everything and then this summer she got to play for the Mexican national team and uh, and get this incredible experience and she was a go-to player for them she was really depended upon and so I think she came back with sort of a new level of confidence she's now also found her voice she is a Swiss Army knife she is this glue player that just makes she's a winner she makes winning plays on both sides of the ball whether it's rebounding whether it's defense whether it's driving to the basket post game but now she's added her three and that's going to help us a lot but you know more than anything it's her it's her mentality she's selfless she'll do whatever it takes to help the team win and it's always about the four letters in the front of her um, jersey not the ones on the back you added some quality transfers Charlize Leisure Walker uh Janaya um uh, Barker and uh, Barker. Tamia uh, uh, Gardner. Gardner. Yep. How? First off, like I, I'm, you're you're definitely aware of a couple of them, uh, just because you've seen them uh, in the uh, you know former Pac-12 uh, uh, shell right. of what it used to be. But what what do those three bring in? And really quickly, uh, can you give uh, a quick uh, injury update on on Leisure Walker? Sure. Um, yeah, I think that the bottom line is uh, Ledger Walker is in the sort of the last phases of her rehab um, and, and she's doing really well but she's day to day um, we're not sure one of the promises I made to Charlize is that I was always going to put her long term over our short term when I recruited her and so um, whatever it takes for her to get a hundred percent and so we are really committed to making sure she's a full go because she has a long career ahead of her it's not just the one year that the Bruins get her it's also what she's going to do beyond so she's doing really well um, we're, we're, we don't know, we don't have a timeline or a date or anything yet, but she's, uh, she's in the last probably, um, trimester, so to speak of her, uh, of her rehab process. Um, and you know, I think the thing that she brings is, um, she is probably the highest IQ guard, uh, in our program. She feels the game. She understands the game. One of the things I love is both her and Kiki are doing this, but Charlize the most, 
all of a sudden my Instagram in the morning, I'll have all these plays and she's sending me plays like, Hey coach, have you thought about this? Have you coach, have you thought about that? <laughs> and I love having that kind of ownership from your point guards. Right. Um, but she's so smart and she, the game slows down for her. She's incredibly level and poised and um, she will be a major impact um, player for the Bruins. Uh, to me, a gardener, obviously we also know well, she's actually had, um, she's only been practicing for about the last three weeks. Um, so because she, we needed to just get her healthy in some, in her, in some minor ways. And so I don't think she's going to be, um, as impactful to start the year as you're going to see when we end the year. Um, she's going to be impactful. Don't get me wrong, but I think that, um, she's going to have a little bit of a growth curve just as she's getting to know her new teammates and all of those things. But, um, she's shooting like literally we keep track of every shot. And in live play over from the summer all the way to now, she's shooting like 67% in live play from the three point line. That's like ridiculous. Yeah. We've not had a shooter <laughs> like that. And because she's six, three, she's able to get it off more. So it's been a really big piece. Um, also that also opens up opportunities for um, Lauren to, to not be doubled because they're worried about leaving to me on the perimeter. So I think that's going to be a huge uh, factor for us. And then lastly, Janiah Barker, she brings an edge um, that we really needed. And, you know, the, the biggest compliment when we were trying to decide of whether to take her as the last transfer, some of her teammates that played with her in U16s for, um, for USA Basketball came to us and said, you know what happened to us against LSU and how we gave up six straight buckets towards the end of the game? Janiah Barker would never have let that happen. And she just <laughs> has a competitive edge to her. And she has great instincts on the floor, and um, she's been really, really good uh, addition to our team. I'm thrilled that she's in a Bruin uniform. Now, uh, for those uh, Bruin fans who have not been able to see uh, uh, tape or, or uh, catch up on the, the four freshmen you have, uh, you have one international guard, uh, Alina Aronsalo. You have uh, Avery Kane, Kendall Dudley, uh, and forgive me uh, if I botched the name, Zania Saka uh, Newman. What do, mm -hmm. what are they going to bring? And obviously, you know, huh. we, there, there's a difference between transfers who already yeah. set in the game, especially if they have two or three years under them. But these are freshmen coming from high school, going into a new environment. Right. But what is different about them? Well, I think that, you know, they are top five um, recruiting class. So first of all, we are really lucky to have them. Every one of them have such a bright future in their own way. Uh, Avery Kane is probably one of the top three three-point shooters uh, in our program, and she's probably one of the best on-ball defenders in terms of the pressure she can put on the ball. Um, you know, I think Kendall Dudley, she's a coach's kid, right? Um, her mom was the high school coach at Sidwell Friends, where Kiki played, where obviously um, Zania played as, as well. And then, you know, so she just makes um, – Tony gave her the ultimate compliment in practice the other day. Coach Tony said, you know – uh, Kendall, I'm watching film, and uh, forget being a freshman. You're one of the players on, on this team who makes the fewest mistakes. She just she knows what she's doing, and she's a great rebounder. She's a great straight-line driver. She's a great defender. And then um, Zania is uh, a 6'3", strong, plays hard, uh, incredible athlete, um, and she's just growing every single day. Uh, she's going to be one of those um, – she reminds me, I was trying to think of some comparisons, but she reminds me of like a, a taller um, Michaela Onionwede when she first came in. She was a little raw, but she played so hard, Michaela did. And her first year, freshman year, she sort of didn't play as much, and she um, was more of a low block player and a rebounder, but you could see these glimpses of potential and her work ethic. And uh, I've seen that in, in Zania as well. She's just been... Um, she's just been doing such a great job of learning every day. And you just see these spectacular things that I think are going to be more and more as she gets more confident and gets more skill. Um, and then who am I missing? Oh, oh, Elena. So Elena from Finland, she's really unique because she played a year professionally as an amateur last year. She graduated early. And so she's got a, a poise and a feel for the game that few freshmen do. And so she is going to be a very impactful person um, early in the year, and it's going to be uh, we're going to really need her to step up before Charlize comes back, and uh, and you know we're, she's going to get a lot of playing time, and we're going to need her to uh, to be very impactful and use that experience. Um, now I know coaches don't like to make bold predictions for their team, 
Uh, and I'm not asking you for, for a pro projection, a record or anything, but what do you think this team can do? Knowing that you have a very solid core, three yeah. experienced transfers, and uh, some really talented freshmen, what do you think this team can do? Well, I think it's just that. They can do anything. This could be a championship-level team. Um, this could be uh, just a, you know one of the best teams that UCLA women's basketball has ever had. Could be. But – Right now, that's all it is. It's mm -hmm. a bunch of really talented could-bes. And yeah. now my challenge to them is, are they willing to develop? Um, you know, we talk a lot about talent is your floor and character and consistency and discipline is your ceiling. And, yeah, so what? They have got a really high floor. Who cares? Um, what, though, are you willing to do to develop the, the character, the skill, the consistency, the discipline that really determines your ceiling? And so our ceiling could be really high, um, but, you know, you got to stay healthy. Um, you know, that's uh, it's, it's just a part of the game. Um, you got to stay healthy. You got to stay selfless and you got to earn uh, those championship habits. And so no doubt the, the excitement is there. The potential is there. But now we need to see consistent growth, uh, better discipline and the habits that it truly takes to raise banners. Yeah, and uh, especially going to the Big Ten, just uh, you, those some of those teams you know because you've played them, you know, teams like Maryland, Indiana, uh, but now it's going to be on a consistent basis. So, yeah, with this team, as you said, can, can, can really put it all out there. Um, I mean, UCLA was picked second uh, to, to finish second in the Big Ten. That says a lot about what uh, outsiders say about this team. But, uh, Coach, I don't want to keep you because you were literally on your way to, to uh, travel across the country to your first game in Paris against Louisville. Uh, first off, how excited are you? And uh, have fun and stay safe. Uh, well, first I want to say thank you um, to all the uh, bros subscribers. Um, you know, we we love passionate Bruins, and that's what bros all about, right, is just fueling the amazing Bruin fans that we have. And so thank you, Mike, for taking time with this. And we want our bros subscribers to uh, get to know women's basketball better. So thank you for doing this. Um, but I also want to say thank you for all the support. You know, we um, we have a lot of pressure now. That it's the reality is of our new landscape is that we need the support of Champion of Westwood. Um, we need the support um, in our fundraising, and so many people have stepped up. And this trip is a great example of that. We wouldn't be doing that without the generous donations of people. Um, you know, and, and we just want to say thank you. When we represent you across the world in this case, um, we're uh, doing a clinic in Paris with some underprivileged kids. Uh, we are taking our education very seriously and how we're um, handling our academics. And then we want to perform at the highest of levels. And we do not get to pursue excellence in all three of those areas without the support of our amazing uh, donors and fans. And we just want to tell you that we're not only representing you on the hardwood, but in the total collegiate excellence of UCLA. So thank you for your support. And we look forward to doing more of these things for Bro in the future. Well, thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, this is uh, head coach Corey Close of the UCLA women's basketball team. Uh, thank you very much. Go Bruins and good luck in Paris. Thank you so much. Bye, Mike. Take care.